Hey guys, welcome to my trailer and truck. I went on a bit of a road trip, a uh, two-fold road trip. The first part was I actually donated that ancient jacquard loom uh, card punch to a museum. It went to Binghamton, to TechWorks in Binghamton. And you may, Binghamton, New York, that is. And I suggest you go check them out. Real good bunch of people. I'm, I'm part of uh, uh, the team working on the 1401 and uh, other projects. Uh, in any case, I figured they were a good home for it because, well, it's a, a real, real solid group. Um, I'm quite impressed by them. And, uh, well, you know, Endicott, New York, and, you know, which is near Binghamton and all that sort of where the the good old punch card sort of came into being why because of ibm and uh, some of the exhibits there at the little museum well they are uh, evolution of punch cards and such like that so you know for time clocks and uh, things that were from ibm's early days well, how about something from the 1800s? Obviously not IBM. We still don't know who made it. We're working on it. But, uh, yeah, the origin of the punch card was the Jacquard Loom. So, hey, it fits in really nicely with the uh, other displays and exhibits there. So I donated it. Hey, if you want to go punch a card, eh, give them a couple months to get the machine all lubed up and cleaned up and all that and set up. And uh, hey, come on over and... Well, we'll punch some cards. You can punch some cards. Yeah, we're a big boot. Anyway, I did uh, come back. Uh, the second part of the road trip was bringing back this. An IBM 4245, uh, looks like Model 20, uh, line printer. It's big. And I've just been taking it off my trailer, as you can see here. And onto the, uh, onto the uh, truck using the uh, lifting gate here. Oh, I love this lifting gate, 3,000 pounds. Because I need this to get the get anything from my trailer into the building on you know, through the dock. And you may be asking, why not why didn't you just take the truck? Well, you know, trucks are costly to run. It's a whole lot easier just to uh, drag around a trailer. So, uh, the truck is for moving lots of things at once, not just one. Okay, yeah, it's probably about 700 pounds, but uh, not for this printer. Anyway, the printer. Yes, this was a pretty successful uh, design uh, for IBM. Mid-80s, they soldiered on well into the 90s. And uh, replaced by the 6262. Uh, I've got a couple of those. One of these days I'll show those. And... Uh, they were the successor of the 30, 3211, which I don't have, and I'd like to find a, an IBM 3211. I am one of those nuts that actually collects line printers, because they were kind of an important thing. I mean, every, every shop, every mainframe shop, Burroughs, IBM, Univac, doesn't matter who it was, they had printers. And they're really fascinating devices. So yes, this was a, uh, uh, I believe this was a German IBM product, uh, Bebligen. Um, it's interesting that Endicott had a competing design, and I don't recall the number, but it was not a good design, and they sold very few of those. We'd actually like to find one of those, and I just can't remember the number. Hey, if you got one and you want to donate it to TechWorks, why not? Uh, it's pretty pretty neat because we do have original IBM old timers that hey worked on IBM printers. I mean 1401, uh, 1403N1s, and all those kind of good stu uh, machines. So hey, if you find one out there, well find two because I want one as well. But um, <laughs> if you find one, get in contact with me or TechWorks and uh, give it a good home. Anyway, let's take a look at this big printer. As you can see, it is big. It's going to be a little shaky as I walk up here. and probably, Hopefully the thing will not get away from me. There we go. And excuse the shadow. It's, it's late in the year, so, uh, well, you know, shadows are long. This is a band printer. Lift up the top here. And uh, pull that down. You can see the ribbon. And 
somehow there we go look at that there we can see the hammers and uh, man this thing is dirty yeah this thing is rough it's rough but I, I'm, I'm making no excuses because these big line printers they are getting very very difficult to find how many how many big shops uh, print up reams and reams and reams well actually sometimes tons and tons of paper literally every day very few are doing that anymore so these big line printers you know they're maintenance headaches because you know hey it's a mechanical device and even though these things were in their day very reliable the years the years are going by so anyway it is a band printer the brand the band fits back under uh, there you can see the hammers well bits of the hammers anyway there we have the ribbon and you can see the ribbon is a gigantic sheet really um and of course being a good good printer you can take everything apart so clean out jams because yeah the things jam occasionally got some knobs for adjustment we have the control panel uh, that looks like registration there sort of and uh this is channel connected this was originally on a 4381 system oh look at the massive sorry about the shadows again massive massive big red switch we've got a smaller panel here power checks disable power on power on off now that this is interesting uh, i've noticed about this and i'll show you some more this is one of the very few IBM machines that actually used a yellow uh, yellow scheme for power. Normally it was almost always red, but uh, weird. Okay, let me uh, cl climb down. Yeah, rough, 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 rough. It's missing, it is missing a back panel. Oh, let's cover let's get this thing down here manufactured in Sweden now this here this area here is is for the stacker and I actually do have that it's uh, in the back of my van you can kind of see there and there is actually a nice kind of a laminate top which is also in the van uh, they were very loose so i did not want them bouncing down the road and off the trailer as i i uh, drove away so i put them in the van anyway let's take uh, uh, some more looks at this thing this is the gate see the back plane power looks three phase this is interesting it's got a handle as if you need to lift it up <laughs> oh, it's got another handle here. Yeah, I suppose if you, they gave you handles to lift a uh, very heavy, uh, at least 55 kilogram uh, transformer module. Got some caps in the back. Yeah, this looks like mostly power supply here. Okay, that, that's loose. Maybe we can... Uh, Here we have the uh, your typical IBM looking cards. Don't know if I'll be able to take one of these out. There we go. Interesting transistors. I, oh, I bet you these are hammer drivers. Because under those heat sinks are um, probably TO220 type transistors of some sort. I hope everything's here. Okay. Now ah, we'll plug that in later. It's being difficult. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. Right. Here is a chart of. Yeah, sure enough, hammer drivers. So this kind of tells you what cards do what. So. Hmm. From a quick glance, it does kind of look like uh, it does kind of look like uh, it probably has all the cards, which is good. Drop 
printer power. Drop the power. That's an interesting. I've never heard IBM say drop the power. Anyway, looking in the back here. Here we have, that's where the paper goes. And obviously there's a bit of scrap paper down there. I'll just get pitched. This is the uh, hammer driver assembly. And it probably comes out somehow, but I don't know how. Evil foam. So, uh, yeah, here, here's another one of these uh, yellow... I've never seen a yellow stop switch. I guess stop under software control? I don't know. So, yeah, it's... Uh, oh, there, there are... Yeah, there's a couple of terminators. That is, as you can... Well, it can barely read bus and tag in and out. So this is obviously at the end of the uh, of the bus because you can see the terminators there. So yeah, interesting story about this. I actually this was actually sitting in the basement of a place of a uh, kind of a strange old man had a shop, and I initially went over there to I talked about it because I wanted to buy this this piles of of uh, rusty old IBM stuff. Well, he uh, he. Uh, Kind of went back. We discussed a price. We came up with a price. I went over there to, to buy it, and he raised the price. And when I groused about that, he kicked me out. He kicked me out of the store. <laughs> so, turns out that he had to move, and he, uh, he uh, um, I don't know if he had to move or wanted to move, but he had to clear the basement out. So, he gave all the IBM stuff away to, to an, uh, another uh, bunch of people. And, well, they picked through the stuff and figured out what they wanted, and the printer was something that they did not want. So, guess what? I ended up with the printer. <laughs> uh, so, hey, old man, you shouldn't have kicked me out. What can I say? But, yeah, real nice. So, yeah, we got some nice buttons here. Sorry about the, uh, the light there. And, uh, excuse me, Dick, getting down on the lift gate again. There we go. So is it restorable? Yeah, it's restorable, but, you know, it's going to be a long one. Uh, it's in the project. And like I said, these printers are just getting too scarce. Too scarce. And, uh, hey, if you know of any big printers like this, and I, I tend to like the, uh, uh, the bigger the better for printers, <laughs> uh, do let me know. Uh, especially if you have that, that Endicott design one, and I kind of wish I knew that number now. Uh, maybe uh, if I find it, I will put it in the comments or something like that. But yeah, let, let, let us know. Don't just send these things to the scrapper. Um, they are big, they are heavy, but uh, some of us actually like the things. All right. Hope you guys like this quick look at a very, very, very recent and very, very, very dirty <laughs> acquisition for the collection. And, uh, yeah, if you like this, leave a like, maybe uh, give some comments here. Uh, I could use some documentation. I do have some 4245 documentation, um, and there might still be documentation kicking around for this spe specific printer. But, yeah, maybe share this, leave a like, leave a comment, maybe subscribe, maybe watch some back videos, share it around, all the good stuff you're supposed to do for watching YouTubers. All right. See you guys later. Bye-bye.